Mr. Velayan, thank you so much for taking the time out and joining us. Now, let's first start off with the entire group. Do you think that this is the start of a big capex cycle for India Inc. at large, which could help the Murukappa group and different companies within the group do well as well? Okay, let me put it in perspective. If you take our own fertilizer company, Coromandel, uh, the minute we start crossing 85% capacity utilization, we start to think of, uh, you know, expansion. Uh, the minute we start getting clear signals from the government that, you know, four years from now, we don't want to be importing fertilizer. And if we start seeing the moves that they're making towards, uh, you know, helping uh, this make in India and make it less, uh, you know, import intensive, these are clear signs, you know. So I think clearly, at least in the urea sector and uh, phosphatic sector, the government has given us a clear view that in the next four to five years, let us make ourselves uh, self-sufficient. Now, it's a different matter uh, in urea, different matter in phosphatics. But uh, our capacity utilizations have certainly ramped up this year. And, uh, you know, investment cycles are such that it will take you another two and a half years to put up uh, a brownfield. So unless you start next year, it won't happen. So we are, in fact, looking at starting next year. Mm, okay. So let me ask you, since you started off with fertilizers, um, let me ask you specifically about Coromandel. How do you see the next two or three years for Coromandel individually? Well, particularly for uh, Coromandel, I think it's very favorable because, you know, we fashioned our entire strategy based on a strong retail network. We knew this DBT was in the offing. And today we've got 1,000 retail outlets. And you know, when this demonetization took place, within 10 days we were up and running in rural India. We had POS machines you know, set up and we had the last mile connectivity with the farmer. So you know, we have invested in this for the last few years. You know, it's not happened overnight. So I think uh, with this kind of spread, we will increase our retail outlets to another 1,200, uh, ultimately 1,400 maybe across a few other states. Then when we start seeing 30-40% of our volume moving through the retail and through the POS machines, and then you know, DBT is really playing out in a real sense. And just to give you a sense, what happens in the retail outlets is we start with the soil testing facility. Then we start with an advisory. So this is in line with the soil health card and what it's ultimately going to specify what can be bought. So we've sort of built a model which is in line with that. Uh, I must say that the first few months after the pilot was carried out by IFCO and us, we were concerned because connectivity was poor. We haven't got our money from the first pilot yet. But you know, these are teething problems. They are listening to us. When we go and make presentations, the department ministry is saying that, okay, we will debug this. Give us two months, give us three months. And I think there is an eagerness to do it. Uh, we ourselves look at this as a big opportunity because it will bring fence our markets where we have the last mile connectivity. It will make it very difficult for importers to forecast and bring in and keep stock because they have to sell in bags and collect subsidy, you know. So we've taken this quite positively because ultimately we also believe it's good for the soil. It's going to end up in balanced nutrition. And our portfolio is largely driven by complex fertilizers which are balanced nutrition products, soil specific and uh, crop specific. You know? Okay. Okay, fair call. So that is one aspect. The other aspect is how would DBT change the cycle for you? The easy answer, of course, is the working capital cycle gets compressed and all of that. But if you can expand a little bit. I think the government is, is pushing all companies to do this now. It's not, we are not the only ones. They are pushing all companies to set up these retail centers because that is the only way you can play out this DBT in its real form. You know? And you know, the DBT, like many of the other things, like Demon or GST, you have to suffer initially. First seven months, we've got 100 crores due, we haven't got it. But we know that once this plays out fully and its connectivity is assured, plus all the debugging is done, then we will get this thing in seven days. 
I am not hopeful that we'll get the seven days in 2018. I am hopeful that we get the seven days in 2019. In 2018, I'll probably have to budget for a slightly longer cash flow for the first half, and then it levels off later. Okay. Uh, okay, let's shift to Chola Mandalam now. You spate of businesses. Let's talk about uh, the big financing play. How, how are the next 12 to 18 odd months looking like for you as a company? We have, uh, we believe that this business can sensibly be grown at 25 to 30 percent CAGR and uh, with a fairly healthy book. Our concentration has been on you know, segmented markets, segmented products and a slightly differentiated strategy. We are seeing the momentum uh, you know, pick up. I think uh, we've had the benefit of lower finance costs because of our better rating. We're also seeing some clear benefits coming through in better collections. Uh, and uh, in Chola itself, you know, with the Safrezi Act, we're seeing it play out. There is a tendency for people who borrow money to really feel that they have to pay it back because, you know, the laws of the land are moving towards being much stricter in the courts and otherwise. You know. So I think that is augering well. Uh, now, how long this will last? Uh, I don't see any change in this for the next few years. You know, fortunately, we have not been in very old vehicles. We have been in only five year, uh, up to five years in second hand vehicles, but mostly in new vehicles as well. So we have to watch things like, you know, uh, because of pollution laws, which vehicles will go out of the market? What will happen to the resale value? Uh, you know, which are the GST effects on load factors? How that will affect different uh, size of vehicles which will be sold? You know, all these are things that we are constantly monitoring. I think uh, use of analytics to be much more focused in this area is going to be um, very key. In Chola itself, you know, the board is just, uh, you know, we are considering uh, seriously looking at uh, a proposal to go into, uh, you know, housing finance because we have a home equity, but we don't have housing finance as an area. And it's a growing area. And so I think the future to make a 30% CAGR for the next three to four years uh, is imminently possible uh, with the better, uh, you know, uh, net uh, outstanding levels. And, and, and do you think this 25-30% compounded annual growth rate that you spoke about can be maintained uh, and with a similar or a better asset quality? You see, there is a herd mentality in India. People come into a business because there is imminent profitability. Now, straight away, we know the players who come in because they have the clout or the money. The players whom we have to watch are those who have the tenacity to stay in and collect and ride the ups and downs. So we have segmented the market and we know who we are playing against where. And, uh, and I think that is the name of the game because you don't play every vehicle, you don't play every market, uh, you don't play without return load information, you know, you don't play without knowing the uh, resale value of vehicles. So, for a new player who comes in, what is visible to him is the profitability and growth and the market price. There are good players who are coming in who are offshoots of NBFCs. Yes, we have to watch them. There are banks who have formed, uh, you know, uh, the HDFC has themselves got a very large NBFC. Uh, you know, they're taking our people, they're growing aggressively, we have to watch them. But I think there's enough space for uh, you know good players to keep this growth. Mm. Okay, my last question to you, Mr. Velayan. Uh, TI Financial, which houses uh, your insurance arms as well, I think the market believes that you would want to spin off the insurance business at some point of time into a separate entity. Is that in the offing? No. Well, we have just created this holding structure where we have uh, you know TI Financial Holdings is holding both the Chola Finance as well as the Chola Insurance. Uh, so 
this is somewhat similar to the Bajaj uh, you know, holding structure. And I think it is efficient in the sense that our ability to raise capital if required and feed into these businesses uh, will be there. Uh, and you know, we don't have to dilute at the operating company level. Okay, so that rules out a separate listing for now or for the immediate future or for the, for the future as, at large. Mr. Vilayan, it's a pleasure talking to you. Thank you so much for taking the time out and speaking to us about your separate group companies 